Okay. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Nature at School webinar series. We're joining Ed Shaw at the Carl T. Johnson Hunt and Fish Center in Cadillac, Michigan today, as he discusses skulls are the key to good ID. Take it away, Ed. All right, thanks, Natalie. Well, I hope everybody is doing well today. Um, I'm the park interpreter here at the Carl T. Johnson Hunting and Fishing Center in Cadillac, Michigan. I'm right here south of Traverse City coming to you, well, not live, but recorded from that area in the beautiful Mitchell State Park. And today we're gonna go over what you guys are gonna see, that, uh, how to identify animal skulls if you come across something while you're out hiking or out on the trails in our wonderful, beautiful state parks. So with that said, I do want you to learn one thing today, and that is how do we fund conservation? And if you learn nothing more than that today, I'm a happy camper. I know this is supposed to be a fun activity and you guys wanna learn all about animal skulls, but I want you guys to understand how we fund conservation, not only in the state of Michigan, but across North America. So first question is, is what is a natural resource? Give me a couple examples of a natural resource. That's right, forests, trees. Trees are a natural resource. We use them to build our homes for paper, for toilet paper, stuff like that are everyday necessities. Those are natural resources that the DNR would uh, help manage. So I work for the Department of Natural Resources and there's all that state and federal land that's out there for you guys to enjoy. Who owns all that state and federal land? No, not me, I don't own it. It's not the government. You do, you own it. You own all that state and federal land. It's yours to enjoy. We are entrusted by you to manage that, all that state and federal land that's out there. And that allows you guys to go hiking and biking and kayaking, canoeing, hunting and fishing. But how do we pay for it? And that's what I want you guys to learn today is how do we pay for conservation in North America? So how do, we, how do you guys think we pay for it? Not our taxes. I don't pay for it. The DNR doesn't pay for it. Hunters and fishermen, we, yep, that's how we pay for it. Hunting and fishing licenses. So we have a thing called the Dingle Johnson and the Pittman Robinson Act. And all the equipment that you buy for hunting and fishing, if you go buy a fishing rod or a fishing lure, there's a tax on that that goes to the federal government. And it's allocated to all 50 states to help us manage wildlife and all those natural resources that you guys like to enjoy. So hunters and fishermen pay for all that conservation for everybody to benefit from the aesthetic views, going swimming in Lake Michigan and making sure our streams, rivers, and our waters are nice and clean. The forest, all those animals you guys like to see, that's all that management is paid for by hunting and fishing licenses. So with that said, well, let's jump right into our rest of our program. All right, and today we're gonna to talk about animal skulls. We're gonna use basically a dichotomous key. Now a dichotomous key is this right here, and it is nothing more than a roadmap to identifying something. Now we have dichotomous keys for everything. As biologists, we like to categorize every species of animal and insects that are out there. So you can get a dichotomous key for insects or trees. There's one for leaves, and if you're, teacher is feeling adventurous, or you are, you can make your own dichotomous key. You can pick random five things in your bedroom, crayons, pencils, paper, anything like that, toys, and you guys can make your own roadmap. So I'm gonna show you guys what that looks like today. Before we get started on our skulls though, you do need to learn a few physiological characteristics about animal skulls. Now, I happen to have a skull here, I don't know, don't, Please don't raise your hand or ask what this skull is, okay? I'll tell you at the very end. First, I wanna cover a few things. Here's a particular animal skull. Now, I'm gonna turn it around so you guys can see everything about this skull, right? What are some of the physiological or characteristics about this skull that really jump out to you? The teeth, right? You got those big sharp teeth right here. These are called the canines. And as what these canines are used for is these particular animals used for killing their prey, right? 
which tells us this animal is a predator. So while we're on the topic of predator, right here, these big loops, this whole thing is not the eye socket right here. And we'll talk about that in a second. But the eyes are in the front of the skull. They're not on the side of the skull like they are in a mammal skull. They're in the front of the skull. Now here is a prey skull. Notice the difference how the on the prey species that the skull eyes are on the side. Okay, so if the eyes are in the front, we know that that animal is a predator. Now, these are called the canines. Inside the canines, so inside the canines, we have, what are these teeth called? Inside, that's right, incisors. So you're gonna need to know that today, and we'll get to that in a second. What about these teeth? So behind the canines, these teeth right here are the molars, or we call them cheek teeth on our roadmap. So you guys are going to need to know that today. So the incisors, these are used for cutting. So as if you were to bite into an apple or cut that apple to chew it, and your molars are used for chewing it up before you swallow your food. So now, when you pick up an animal skull today, you're going to flip it over, and we're going to count the incisors, and then we're going to count one side of the cheek teeth. Let's look at the rest of the skull, see if we can get a few more hints about it about what type of animal this is. So we already know that it's a predator because the eyes are in the front, canines. What about this hole right here with the nose, right? You think this animal has a very good sense of smell for hunting? You betcha. This particular animal has a very good sense of smell. And it's got a little mohawk here. What about this mohawk? This mohawk is called the occipital crest. And that, combined with these big loops right here, tells me that this particular animal has a very strong bite. So the bigger these loops and the larger this crest, the occipital crest, the stronger the bite. So you can imagine that an alligator or a lion, they've got really big, long jaw bones loops that that jaw muscle connects to, so it can crush bones and everything. All right. I know it's killing everybody and everybody wants to know what type of animal this is. So what do you guys think? What type of animal is this? It's not a bear. It's not a fox. We have them in the UP, it's a wolf. Good job, it's a wolf, you guys. So now we won't have wolf on our dichotomous key. So we're gonna put this one away. I want everybody to get out a piece of paper and a pencil. And I'll give you the numbers as we go along in the PowerPoint, all right? So go ahead and I'll give you a second, get out a piece of paper and a pencil. All right, and I'm going to share my screen with you guys. All right, give me a thumbs up or let me know that you guys can see a picture of a deer. All right. Okay, everybody should be able to get their piece of paper and a pencil. Let me grab my laser pointer here. This is a dichotomous key. Now, where do you guys think you guys start? That's right, right here at the big green start button, just like green light means go, right? Now, remember what I said the incisors were? The incisors are those front teeth that you bite with. If the animal has no incisors, it's going to be a white-tailed deer. If it has two or more incisors, we're going to move down to the next stop right here. Now, you guys have to read through this every single step, and that is the key to using dichotomous keys. You can't just jump ahead because you might miss something, right? So eight or more incisors in the upper jaw. It's going to be a possum. Now, because it's so hard for you guys to measure, I did not include the eastern mole, but you guys can come down here and we'll just jump right over to here. Now, if it has two incisors in the lower jaw, you're gonna come down here to the rodents. And if it has two or more incisors, you guys are gonna come down here to our predators. So with that said, 
I'm going to give you guys an example. So here's your first skull. Everybody got their piece of paper ready? Write down the number one. All right, so this one right here is going to be our number one. So this is number one. Let's look at the profile. Mm, it's very, it, that's kind of flat. So I'll write down some characteristics that you notice about this skull. And I'll give you a second. All right, so I wrote down that this skull is flat, eyes on the side of the head, compared to this one, you know, this one's very rounded, right? We're gonna come over here and let's count the teeth. So it has how many incisors? One, two incisors. How about cheek teeth? And we're only gonna count one side of the cheek teeth. So it has one, two, three, four, five, five cheek teeth. Now write down on your piece of paper that has two incisors and five cheek teeth. Let's go take a look at our roadmap here, our dichotomous key, right? Did it have two or more incisors, thumbs up or thumbs down? Thumbs up if it has two, more, two or more incisors, thumbs down if it does not, okay? So I'll read them out, you guys let me know. All right, two or more incisors in the upper jaw, yep. So we're gonna go this way. Six or less incisors in the upper jaw. Did it have six or less? Yeah, it had six or less. So we know that it's not a possum because it only had two. We're gonna come down here. I told you guys can skip right to here. Did it have more than two incisors in the upper jaw? No, it doesn't have more than two. It only has two, right? So we're gonna come down to here. Now, did it have a small tooth present behind each incisor, I didn't see a, a small tooth, did you? Nope, so we're gonna come down to here. No small tooth behind them. Let's see, was the top of the skull flat or were the teeth orange? So front of incisors orange, top of the skull round. Was this one round or flat? I wrote down flat, so what do you guys think it is? It's the woodchuck, good job, woodchucks. Woodchucks are very cool animals. Uh, we see them everywhere, but they are the bulldozers of the animal world. So I'm going to stop sharing for a second so I can show you this skull. So it's what woodchucks do is they use the top of their head just like a bulldozer blade would and push dirt. These are the guys that are digging holes for a lot of other animals that may or may not dig their own dens. And more often than not, you'll find multiple species in woodchuck dens. So this time of year, animals are hibernating. They're trying to stay warm. You might find a woodchuck and a skunk, maybe a couple of snakes all together inside of that woodchuck den. <clears throat> Good job, guys. All right, you guys ready to try one on your own? All right, I'm gonna share to go back to sharing my screen here. All right, let's try that next one all on your own. This would be your number two. So write down on your piece of paper, number two, look at the physiological features. Are the eyes on the front or the side of the head? Good job, they're on the side, right? So we know what to pray. I'm gonna come over here and it's kind of hard to see, but it's got one, two incisors and look at these little holes behind the, these two front incisors. So that's two incisors. It's got two little holes that are behind the front incisors. Let's count the cheek teeth. I'll help you guys count them. One, two, three, four, five. So two incisors, holes behind the front incisors. It's got five cheek teeth and eyes on the side of the head so we know what to pray. Let's go to our map. And I'll give you guys a minute to do this all on your own. So I'm gonna give you guys two minutes. I'm gonna watch the clock. And you guys use the roadmap to write down what you think it is. Let me know when you guys have it.
All right, let's take a look. Two or more incisors in the upper jaw. Yep, so we can go down to here. Six or less, yes. Total length of the skull, like I said, we can move here. How many, did it have more than two or, or two or less? It had two or less, right? We're gonna come down here. Did it have those small teeth behind those two incisors? It did, right? So it's a Eastern Cottontail Rabbit. So we see Cottontail Rabbits all over Michigan, especially in the spring. They like to be out in the fields eating clover. So if you guys are close to a state park or even maybe one of the metro parks, I encourage you guys to get out. And if you watch the mowed fields, especially along the edges, you guys can get out and see rabbits. And it's a very fun animal to hunt and they make a very good pot pie or stew. So I hope you guys, if you guys ever have the, the opportunity to try rabbit or even get out and go rabbit hunting, I encourage you guys to definitely do so. All right, you guys ready to try another animal? Yeah, all right, let's try another one. All right, this is gonna be our number three right here. Number three, right here. All right, this would be number three down below right here. Number three, here's the top of number three. It's got kind of that occipital crest right there like the wolf did, all right? Are the eyes on the front or the side of the skull? That's right, this time they're on the front, right? Got the canines with the incisors. So we're gonna flip the skull over. We'll take a look over here. It has how many incisors? So we're gonna count one, two, three, four, five, six incisors. So we have six incisors, one side of the cheek teeth, one, two, three, four, five, six. And we have six cheek teeth. So right down. Eyes are in the front of the skull. It has canines, so we know it's a predator, right? We have six incisors and six cheek teeth. Let's take a look at our road map here. We'll start here, two or more incisors. Did it have no incisors or two? Yep, it had two or more, right? We had six. So six or less. So we're gonna move down here. Total length of upper skull is more than 50 millimeters. Did it have less than two incisors or more than two? We had six, right? So this time we're gonna go this way. Which animal had six cheek teeth? What do you guys think? Raccoon, good job, it's the raccoon. Now, I like raccoons. I think they're very neat critters and a couple of cool facts right here. So raccoons like to live up in trees, right? But they'll often nest together all in one cavity so they can keep warm, especially when they hibernate. But the cool thing I like about uh, raccoons is they like to be very clean and neat animals. So they'll actually, they prefer moving water. They'll wash all their food and they go to the bathroom in moving water. Why do you guys think that is? That's right, so it moves all their waste downstream away from predators so predators can't find them. What else do raccoons like to eat? What do you guys think? That's right, that's why I knew you guys were gonna say that. They get in your trash at home, right? They get in your garbage. Why do animals like raccoons, possums, skunks, and bears all get in our garbage? Because as humans, we're very wasteful. We, throw, we tend to throw away a lot of food, right? So they are opportunistic feeders. It, it's no different when your moms and dads are in a hurry and they wanna run to McDonald's, right? It's quick and convenient. You don't wanna stop along the road on vacation and go out and forage for nuts and berries and all that fun stuff, do you? Or you can just stop at Burger King or McDonald's or Taco Bell or whatever you guys prefer. And it's quick and convenient. So is fast food healthy for you guys? No, it's not, right? So is garbage healthy for wild animals? No. So it's important when you guys take down your garbage, put a bungee over top of the lid, or make sure you just don't set bags out by the road. Make sure they're in a garbage can or inaccessible to animals because animals, it's not healthy for animals. And we don't want to have problems with them getting in our garbage. So it's important to make it inaccessible to those because it's not healthy for them at all. Just like fast food is not healthy for you. That's our garbage can. It's quick and convenient and it's not good for us. Just like garbage for 
raccoons and bears and possums. All right. You guys ready to try another skull? Oh, that's what I want to hear. All right. So let's count the incisors on this one. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have seven incisors on this animal, right? Notice the eyes are in front of the skull. It doesn't really have a, a much of an occipital crest, but it, it's, it's kind of got one there, right? Let's count the cheek teeth on this animal. Now, this one has a plus one on it. And the reason it has a plus one on it is because we use the bottom jaws to count the teeth, but because we use them in so many programs with kids, the bottom jaws get dropped on the floor and broken. So we got to add one to the skull. All right, so what, let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, and the plus one makes seven. We have seven cheek teeth, more than six incisors. Eyes are in front of the skull, so we know it's a predator. Let's take a look at our road map. All right, we'll give you guys a couple of minutes to do this one all on your own. All right, you guys about there? All right, let's start at the green button or start here and go. Two or more incisors in the upper jaw. Yep, it had more than two, right? Did it have eight or more? No, it had less than eight, so it's not the possum skull. Six or less? Yep, we know it's bigger than the Eastern Mole because we compared it right next door, right next to the raccoon skull, right? So we know it's a little bit about the same size as a raccoon. Did it have two or more? No, we know it's not a road, it was a predator. We're gonna come down here. How many cheek teeth did we have? Seven? It is the fox, right? And fox are really cool animals. They can hear very, very well. They're excellent mousers. And you often see, if you guys have opportunity to YouTube uh, fox hunting, I encourage you guys to do that because you'll watch a fox come straight up in the air and they come straight down into the snow and they pin down a mouse and that's how they catch them. So animals like fox, coyotes, and even wolves and bears are excellent mousers. That is the majority of their protein. Mice are very important. Moles and mice, those are key species in the animal kingdom. And a key species means there's a lot of those animals out there and a lot of animals are dependent upon those. And if we were to lose that one key species, it's gonna have a huge ripple effect among our food web. So these guys are really good mousers, but we also have two types of fox in Michigan. We have the red fox and we have the gray fox. Have you guys ever heard your parents or grandparents or maybe even yourselves, you, someone said, I saw a fox in the tree and you're like, no, no, fox can't climb trees. They're, they're dog species, right? Well, that's not necessarily true. A gray fox has a dew claw like a cat. And they often will get into low lying branches and get into birds nest and eat the eggs or baby birds out of those nests. So if you've ever heard anybody say, I saw a fox up in a tree. Well, maybe they really have, but it was a gray fox, not a red fox. So these guys like hardwoods, cedar swamps, um, not so much open areas like the red fox does. The red fox likes big fields and uh, you'll find them often along cattail marshes with open areas. So that's where you're gonna see red fox more often. All right, you guys ready for a couple more skulls? All right, that's what I wanna hear. Let's try these two. So these two skull kind of looks a little funny compared to this one, All right? Let's see, the eyes are in the front of the skull. So this would be number right down the skull, okay? All right, let's count the incisors on this skull. We have one, two, three, four, five, 
incisors. Let's count the cheek teeth. We have one, two, three, four, there's a little one right there, five, five cheek teeth. Let's take a look at a road map and I'll give you guys a minute to do this one. You guys should be getting pretty good at this. All right, let's take a look at our start button here. We had more than two incisors, right? Yeah, so we're going to go this way. Six or less. Yeah, so we're going to go down here and jump up to here. Did it have two or more, two or just two? That's right, it had two or more, right? So we're going to come down here. And which animal had five cheek teeth? The river otter, one of my favorite animals, right? The cool part about a river otter is they have elongated skulls. So they can go through the, the water. They almost look like little alien skulls. But even more so, just like the raccoon, they're also very neat animals. So if you're ever walking a path along a stream bank or a river, and you guys see a big pile of mushroom sh shells, or not mushroom shells, uh, freshwater mussel shells, or if you guys see uh, crayfish parts all in a pile, and you think, hmm, People threw those up on there. They almost look like someone collected a pile of uh, clam shells, freshwater mussel shells, right? Those, that's an otter dinner table. Otters like to collect all their food and eat in the same location every day. They also have an otter toilet and they go to the bathroom in the same place every day. Sound like someone familiar? Just like you, right? Just like you, these animals also have canines. So if you take your tongue and you feel in your mouth, you can feel those canines in incisors and molars, right? So, kind of sound a little familiar. Not a toilet, a dinner table. They like to wash their food. They're kind of like many people, right? So, let's go try another one. You guys ready? Oh, wrong way. Let's try this one right here. So this would be number six. Try number six. Let's count the incisors. One, two, three, four, five incisors. And these teeth are a little harder to see in this picture. Well, you got one, two, three, three cheek teeth. Let's go back to our roadmap. I'll give you guys a minute to follow it and see which one you guys think it is. All right, what do you guys think? Oh, you're getting good at this. It's a bobcat. Good job, you guys. Bobcat. Cool things about bobcats, we have them all, not only all over Michigan, you'll find them in southern and up in the UP. They love to live in uh, cedar swamps or swampy areas. They're excellent hunters, especially with rabbits and mice, birds, you name it. They're a uh, very excellent predator, just like your house cat. They love to hunt. Right? They're just a giant big house cat, very cool animals, but they're also found all over North America. So if you go out west, the western cats tend to have more spots. Eastern cats, they're, sometimes they don't have hardly any spots at all. So you can see differences between an eastern cat and a western cat, but you also find them down south. You'll find bobcats in Florida, Arizona, even in the hot area. So they're found all over North America. Very cool animal. Um, but they're very hard to see. They're very private animals and they only tend to hunt at night. So if you're lucky enough to see a bobcat, you're among the very few. They're very, very difficult animals to see in the wild, but they're all over Michigan. You might see their tracks and what looks like a giant cat track out in the snow, especially this time of year. Those are bobcat tracks. Good job, you guys. All right. So I have one more skull for you guys left. This one's a little bit more difficult, but 
small skull, orange. It has one, and you can see that second incisor underneath, right? Take a look at it. Our last animal, two or more incisors come down here, six or less, right? It's a small skull, but it's not an eastern mole. Come up here. It only had two incisors, so we know it's a prey species. Eyes were inside of the head. Which one had orange teeth? That's right, the squirrel. Good job. And you guys probably, if you've been around bird feeders enough, you guys have all probably seen squirrels. How many squirrel species do we have in Michigan, though? Let's see, we have a red squirrel, fox squirrel, we have gray squirrels, and we have black phases of a gray squirrel. Right? And any other ones we're missing? Let's see, we have the red, fox, gray, the black phase of the gray, right? Chipmunks, chipmunk squirrels. Yeah, they're part of the squirrels. They're part of the rodent area family, right? So we have lots of squirrels in Michigan for you guys to see. I uh, hope you guys get out and see. Maybe you can find all five in your yard. They're pretty common around Michigan. If you guys can spot a fox squirrel, those are the ones that are real big and red. You got the littler red squirrels. Those are the ones that are always chirping at you when you're out, especially around pine trees. And then you have the gray and the black. So let's see if you guys can get outside today. Watch your bird feeders for the squirrels. Watch up in trees, and you guys might be able to spot a few. All right. So just like these animals, right, you guys have these teeth too in your incisors. So let's see. Oh, had a little alarm come up there. No big deal. All right. So just like these animals, you guys have those same teeth, right? So let's take a look at, let's do your skull. You guys can count them. Just use your tongue. You guys can feel your canines right here, right? You have your incisors and your cheek teeth, right? You have more than two. Where are your eyes? Are they on the side or in the front? They're in the front, right? So you're a predator too. So you guys can, when you guys find a skull, all these skulls out in the wild are going to tend to have these physiological features. If your teacher would like a copy of, um, our key for you guys to do in the classroom hands-on, or I hope you guys are able to come and visit our sites. Typically, I have the, the key and all these animal skulls out on a table so you guys can try them. I hope you guys get to Cadillac this time of year. And I have one last question for you guys, and that is, how do we fund conservation in our state? Everybody yell it, let me hear you, nice and loud, right through the computer. Hunting and fishing licenses, that's right. We fund conservation in North America through hunting and fishing licenses. Good job, guys. You guys have been a great crew. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. If you guys have any questions, do not hesitate to email me, and I'd be more than happy to answer any questions you guys may have about the DNR, what we do, who we are, or even careers in the natural resources. So you guys have a wonderful day, and I hope to see you this summer.